Hello and welcome for the tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial we will review the building of the film stack for analyzing uh, measurement data. The measurement data is um, uh, photoresist on the sapphire. So here is our measurement data. Uh, now we need to first uh, build the approximate film stack that represent the sample. The substrate is sapphire so we'll um, Select the subfire here material. Um, let's see here the subfire. Uh, it represented with the um, using Cauchy approximation and we'll adjust it later. So now we'll um, adjust the wavelength range. Uh, to match our measurement data. Okay, so we change the substrate and now we need to uh, change. Actually, there we can do it differently. We'll just remove the layer and uh, add the um, uh, layer of photoresist. We don't have optical constants of the photoresist, which, so we'll just uh, use the polymer and uh, we'll give it uh, one uh, micron, the thickness here is N-extremes. Uh, so um, we have uh, 1000 nanometers. We know that um, it's approximately should be about 1.5 micron, the thickness photoresist. So the first thing we'll do is um, uh, estimate approximately uh, the thickness. So we'll just um, select the thickness as a calculated parameter, uh, use the thick film algorithm and calculate. So um, it gives us about 1.5 microns. So it's a little bit difficult to see so we'll uh, uh, reduce the range to see it more clearly let's say to 5 microns and uh, recalculate so we see it more clearly. The peak position indicates the thickness. Uh, but uh, we know that um, optical constants of this polymer uh, probably not accurately represent uh, photoresist. And we don't know the optical constant photoresist. So um, uh, if we will um, just try to see how the measured data fit the model, we see there is a shift. It's not really accurately represented. So what we'll do is um, adjust the Cauchy coefficient, coefficients. That means we'll adjust the optical refractive index, optical constants of the foot uh, of this layer to match the photoresist. Uh, so for that we'll use uh, Markward uh, film fitting Okay, so the fit is much better, now it's lined up, uh, measured the model data, but uh, we see there is a still discrepancy uh, between, between these two. So um, uh, we need to adjust the scale. Scale is taking care of um, differences in intensity, uh, basically between um, calibration and measurement um, and um, and also um, any changes in the um, intensity of the light source. So let's see how it look like. Okay, so it look better. Uh, we still have a little bit shift uh, at a shorter wavelength. It's going up there, 
model data and here it's going down. So it looked like um, uh, the effect of uh, certain roughness, certain light scattering. Uh, it can be also some uh, small absorption of the photoresist. Um, in any case, so what we want to do is um, to add a roughness parameter. So we always want to put minimum at least one. We don't want to, it to go crazy, so we'll limit it 200 uh, angstroms feet. Let's say starting value about 10 and um, calculate again. So now we have almost perfect fit. Uh, the thickness is uh, um, 1500 uh, nanometers, 1 1.5 uh, microns. Uh, so um, uh, let's see what we can do now. So in um, in production environment and uh, for quick measurement it's always easier to use thick film. So we need now to check if our film stock and settings give the same the same value than we use the thick fill algorithm as with the curve fitting. So we see this uh, uh, 1549. Uh, let's say what will happen if we have um, a thick fill algorithm, right? So the value is higher, about 5 nanometers. Uh, so we need to adjust a little bit the uh, parameters of the calculation. So we have here Kaiser. Let's say if we have um, uh, Gaussian. Uh, so this is a di data filter, basically a podization of their uh, measured data. Uh, okay, so it's a, a decrease, but we still have about 2 nanometers difference. Let's see. What will happen if we'll remove altogether the filter because data is pretty good. Yeah, so without the filter we're pretty much uh, matching the measurement of the uh, measurement result that we have for the curve fitting, right? Uh, so it's a perfect fit. And now <coughs> we can use the um, fig film algorithm in um, in measurement of other samples. But before we do that, um, let's just uh, try to check um, two things. First, we want to check that um, our um, optical constants are reasonable. Ah, what we forgot to do is to adjust the range of this um, model. Uh, so, so this is the optical constant about 165. Sounds reasonable for a refractive index of the photoresist. Uh, let's uh, just recalculate um, uh, to make sure, and um, and now we can remove here calculation of the optical constants. Uh, we'll have them fixed. And um, we can save uh, this film stock. Uh, we'll say here on subfire test. And we can try uh, some other data. Uh, so we have good results here as well um, and we can try the thicker photoresist 
now obviously that's a totally different thickness so we have two choices we can always use the thick film algorithm and get very nice uh, and accurate results or um, we can um, put here order search and um, so that we can measure both uh, thinner and thicker photoresist so we need to have something uh, 1.2 micron and uh, let's say 3 micron and let's say we have 20 points in the grid So it takes some time because uh, software need to calculate um, solution for different starting points, right? So um, it's a little bit slower. Um, if we go back. So. Um, the last thing we wanted to check is um, uh, resolution correction. So we're measuring uh, with the wavelength resolution about 2 nanometers, uh, 20 angstroms. We'll see what effect it has on our measurement results. So if we will... A very small effect. So we have uh, 2440. If we will do now uh, calculation here, there is no change in the thickness. So let's see now if uh, angle have any effect. We have about 90 de 9 degrees conversion aperture and um, there's a little effect yeah so angle effect about one nanometer so um, for very accurate measurements we can use uh, this angle correction it makes uh, calculation a little slower but it gives uh, a little bit more accurate results so uh, we have a we have a film stack and um, uh, we can use it now for all the other samples thank you very much for tuning in and um, stay tuned for a new video uh, the next video will be tutorial for a little bit more complex film stack hope you enjoy it thank you bye bye